and welcome back to another video. So the last video I made on the topic of joining the army did really well and there were also a lot of comments on that video and I've received a lot of private messages about how I train to get in the army and pass the assessment centre. So that's what this video is about today. I'm basically going to take you from when I started properly focusing on fitness which was April 2020 to when I applied and then to when I did the assessment centre and basically the whole training that I did in that time you know what worked what didn't what actual workouts I did weights I lifted like the whole shebang run times everything so you guys have a good idea of how I trained to get in the army and pass the assessment center so starting at the beginning and I guess also for background is I have kind of been on and off with fitness like my whole life I've never been the type of person that's never touched fitness I've always kind of dipped in and out but I would say up until April 2020, I didn't really regularly do it. For example, from January to April of last year, I probably worked out like five times in three months. Like it wasn't a lot. When I decided in April to start working out properly, I was working out a minimum of three or four times a week. And I've been consistently doing that since. So my fitness ability in April wasn't nothing, but it also wasn't good enough to be a good starting point to get in the army. Whenever I'm going to talk about anything, I'm going to break it into three sections. So I'm going to talk about upper body strength, lower body strength, and cardio running. So my stats back then, if you will, in April 2020 were running. I could probably run three kilometers without stopping. Well, and, that, and that'd be generous really. And I was running about six minutes a kilometer. I couldn't do any push-ups. I pretty much could do, I think, about five on my knees. I couldn't do any chin-ups, nothing like that. And squats wise, I reckon I could probably do 20 and then I'd struggle to do another set of 20. I eased myself in pretty much and worked out up until I took the assessment center in December 2020. Now for context also, I applied in July 2020. So I kind of had three months to get to a good level of fitness before then I applied because I knew that the application process takes a while. Obviously I applied in July, didn't actually take the assessment until December. And from what I've heard, that is quite quick. So you do have a good time to train once you've applied, but I would also recommend, you know, being at a good place, knowing that you'll be able to reach the end goal of passing the assessment center when you do apply. So taking you through the training I did, I pretty much did the same category or type of training, just what I actually did changed over time and progressed over time. So for example, for running, I aim to do three runs a week. Not gonna lie, that didn't happen every single week, but that was my aim. And obviously the distances and things changed and the times changed as I progressed, but I did three runs a week. Out of the three runs, I wouldn't necessarily do them in any particular order. It was pretty much what I felt like doing as long as I did those three runs in that week. So I would do a long run, which for me when I first started would be a 5K. I aim to basically just run that at a slow jog pace, basically just to try and build the distance in and get my body used to running. So yeah, a a long run whatever long is for you is fine just what is the distance that you run at that is like your max distance if you run it at quite a steady pace long run with the long runs they built and built and built to about 16 kilometers by the time it was like November December time and really with the long run I just built it up by doing half a k extra a week I'd only obviously be doing the long run once a week so 500 meters extra a week wasn't a lot to incrementally build it. And then there'll be some weeks where I just kept it the same distance. So over the eight months, I basically went from 5K to 16K, which is about 10 miles. By all means, you do not need to be running that distance. I personally was just doing that because I wanted to train for a half marathon. So you don't need to be doing that. It's just the case of doing a long run to get your body used to running, get your legs strengthened to be running and pounding for that, like a long period of time, whatever long is for you. And just ensure that you're running a distance that does fatigue you. So I would recommend by the time that you actually join the army, I mean, it's different for every single person and it's hard to put a number on everything, but I would say as long as you run a 5k by the time you join the army, I would say your cardio would be good enough for the army. Then I would do like a mid run, which would be quite a fast pace, but it wouldn't be like a sprint. So I pretty much stuck this around the 2K mark for probably the first six months, because I knew also that the 2K run was at the time, the assessment of cardio for the British Army. So I was like, if I'm gonna do the 2K run every single week, it's a good indicator of how fit we're getting in comparison to the standards you need to meet. Now for the 2K, I obviously started off doing a 2K best effort and built it up. I obviously went from 11 minutes 30 in the end I could do it in nine minutes and I was hitting nine minutes in July it really did not take me long doing that run once a week and obviously in conjunction with all the other workouts I was doing but 
it did not take me long to get my runtime down. So if that is something you are struggling with, then don't worry about it. As long as you keep at it and keep consistent, then you'll be fine. And I think also with the 2K effort, it is just mental and running generally. Like you'll feel fatigued, but you're capable of doing it. Like a 2K effort at the end of the day is 10 minutes. And I'd break it in my head and be like, okay, it's just another minute, it's just another two minutes. Like, and when you're listening to music or a podcast or whatever you're doing, by the time you've thought about it, you've probably done like three, 400 meters. And then when you think about it and you've like, oh, I've done three, 400 meters, there's nothing stopping you doing another three, 400 and then you're halfway done. So that's kind of how I break down training to like push, push, push and ensure that you're like beating your times every time. And in the end, by the time I was applying, my mid run was 3.2 miles, which I could do in just under 15 minutes. So that's obviously like two mile run and basically just to aim to do it as fast as possible for a good distance. Then I would do sprints as my third run. Now sprints workouts can vary. So I started off just doing 10 lots of 100 meter sprints. So I would basically on my Strava app, which is like a fitness tracking app, if you don't have it, it's basically Facebook for like people who work out <laughs> and it tracks all your fitness and stuff on there. So I would measure out a distance on Strava, which is like kind of accurate, kind of not. And I would see what 100 meters is. I would then sprint it and then I would walk it back. So it would normally work out to be about 20, 30 second sprint for me, and then a minute or so walking back. So you kind of have on off, on off for sprints. Then I built the sprints workout from 100 meters, you know, up to 200 meters, 400 meters. Now the type of sprints workouts I'm doing is I do 500 meters on and then 500 meters off. And I sometimes, if I feel like it, I will do a 500 meter like sprint, fast as you can, good effort. And then the 500 meters off will either be a jog or like a walk. It ultimately just depends on like how I feel that day. And I normally do four or five lots of them. So it'll round up to 4K in total or 2K sprint. And then as I progressed as well, I started doing hill sprints or stair sprints. So round by me, I have a big Westfield, especially during the lockdown. I basically went up the steps there. It was 50 meters up and 50 meters back. So I would sprint up, sprint back, have a breather so on and so forth and do 10 lots of that. Or if you have a good hill, you can do exactly the same thing, measure out the distance of the hill, run up and then walk down, run up, walk down and it will basically improve your fitness. As long as sprints, workouts, you're running as fast as humanly possible up the hill or on the distance that you're doing, then you will improve with your speed. And I would say doing those three runs a week really did enable me to pr improve my cardio. And obviously each run has its own purpose in improving your fitness level, but my fitness level did definitely improve. So obviously my 2K time came down and generally at my 5K time, I started off but it was probably, I think, 28, 29 minutes. And by the end, it was 24 minutes. And just generally sprints and stuff, I was getting a lot faster, a lot stronger. And I felt like my form was a lot better for running, which definitely did help me when I, you know, did the assessment center. Like my average K time basically went from six minutes to four minutes, 34 minutes, 40, which pretty good considering I had not really ran before that. And I only started training like for six months. So it's doable basically if you stick at it and be consistent. And now I wanna talk about the bleep test because I do acknowledge that it's not the 2K run anymore for the actual assessment center, it's a bleep test and it is very different to the training for the 2K run. But I would say everything I'm mentioning about cardio is applicable to the 2K run and also the bleep test. So the bleep test, I personally, I didn't know it was a bleep test until quite um, soon before my assessment center. So I only did the bleep test twice before my assessment center, basically twice in the week before I went. So I didn't have a great deal of practice, but because I'd done a lot of sprints and a lot of endurance runs, my body was physically capable of keeping that speed and distance up for the bleep test. So the bleep test really, I would recommend actually practicing it a lot in more in advance than I did. And the bleep test app I used, I'll put on screen here, it was the one that was recommended to me in the army guidance that I was given about my assessment center. And it's called, I think it's like bleep test light, put a picture here. That's the one that I used. I basically would measure out the distance. I literally measured my foot in trainers to see the, the, like, the length of my foot. And then I worked out how many feet it would need to make up 20 meter distance. And I literally then just, paste it out down at my local park in between some like lampposts and I like drew some leaves out on the floor so I knew the distance. I mean, if you've got a tape measure, 
that's a more accurate way of doing it. That's an easier way of doing it, but I didn't have that. So I wanted the exact distance because that's the important thing about the bleep test. It's about ensuring that when you train, you do have that 20 meter distance, no more, no less, because it will skew your score. And also when you do train for the bleep test, try and do it in the exact same positions. So then you can actually see your progress. And I would also say for the bleep test, it is worth just being super honest with yourself. Like if you miss one of the lines or you're like just like a little bit short, you can't just go, oh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, because on the day it will not be fine, that'll be like a mark. So you need to really be honest with yourself when you are training to ensure that you're making those beeps every single line to get the score that you wanna get. Me personally, I never trained above level nine. I mean, I did the bleep test twice for my practice. I got to level nine and went, yeah, that's gonna be fine because obviously that was way higher than what I needed. I think I needed 7.2, 7.4, something like that for my medic role. So I knew that as long as I hit level eight, I'd be fine, but I wanted to hit above infantry. On the day, I think I got 8.4 and it was chucking it down with red. So I consider that like an all right effort, but it also shows you that I was training for a level nine in my two tries for the bleep test, but I got 8.4 on the day. So you do get a little bit low. So I would try to really push beyond what you need to get because the nerves, the tiredness, everything gets to you on the day. The run was the very, very last thing I did. It was at 4 p.m. And I've been up for like 12 hours before that. So, you know, it is worth training beyond what you need to get for the bleep test. And my end tips for the bleep test is just, you need to practice it. I'd recommend doing it once a week on top of the other runs or maybe switch out, you know, the 2K run and put the bleep test in there instead. And and it is just mental. As long as you're breathing as you run and really do allow air into the lungs, especially in the early, easier levels, then that will set you up when you do the harder levels. And just to have a clear head, don't think about, okay, I've got to get this level and this level and this level, because then it will seem like a very, very long time. Like, it is worth noting that a level nine, which is above infantry standard, is about eight minutes. So that's a lot quicker than what you would do the 2K run in, typically. So it is less time running, but it can feel a lot longer because it's very monotonous, just running back and forth, back and forth. So it is a mental game, the bleep test, and you just have to stay out of your own head and just focus on getting the line, getting the line, getting the line, and just focus on the here and now of it. And then it will whiz by, I think, a lot quicker. And just some general final tips for running. If you're struggling with running and you really don't know like how to get into it and you want some like good runs or you want some motivation, Couch to 5K app is really good. The actual army app is really good. They do a lot of runs on there, steady runs, sprints runs. They basically design runs for you to enable you to get fit. And I use that a lot in the beginning and they are really good. And also on the Nike running app, they do a lot of guided runs. So you, you know, you pick your distance or you pick your time and someone will talk you through the run, which I quite like because it can be quite motivational. So they are all good apps to go and check out if you want to get into running, don't know where to start, or you feel like it's really hard to motivate yourself to do running, or you don't know what type of sprints workouts to do or like a steady run or the times and distances and all of that like because it is obviously subjective to the person you know I can sit here and say yeah do a 5k or do a 10k but you might only be able to do a 1k and that's completely okay but it's just about finding the distances and times that are right for you and then building on that as long as you're building and improving on your run times and on your fitness times, that is all that matters. Okay, so moving on to the strength stuff. The assessment center is built on two things, the med ball and the mid thigh pull. So I'm gonna talk about upper body strength first and how I prep to do the med ball and then you know, lower body and mid thigh pull in a moment. For strength workouts, I did three workouts a week. That's what I aimed to do. I did one focusing on arms, one focusing on lower body and one focusing on abs. So upper body strength, as I said earlier, I had none, okay, when I first started. In April, I could do a couple of press-ups on my knees and I couldn't do probably one off my knees, couldn't do any chin-ups, couldn't do pretty much anything. Lifting weights, I could do a 1.5 kg. I basically trained, obviously, over that time to build up to be able to pass the med ball throw. So basically the way I did it in the beginning was I did a lot of HIIT workouts. I use religiously pretty much the Nike Training Club app, put it on screen here. And I would do a lot of arm workouts on that. They used a lot of body strength exercises. So after a few months of doing the kind of body weight exercises, I did find that I did plateau. Like I didn't really feel like I was getting any stronger because on the side, probably once a week, I'd be like, oh, can we do any press ups yet? And I couldn't. So it was was a bit disheartening but then I kind of got to the point where I was like yeah the only way I'm probably gonna be able to improve on this is if I do press-ups like all the time so 
I basically started doing them against the wall or like doing them against like a windowsill or that type of thing, the stairs, and slowly built from doing them against walls and the stairs to doing them on my knees to then doing them off my knees. And it took obviously quite a long time, probably like three months to be able to go from doing a set of 20 against the wall to be able to do 10 press ups off my knees. But at that time I was only probably doing press ups like four times a week. Basically, whenever I worked out, I was like, oh, chuck in some press ups against the wall or whatever when I was doing it. But the press ups are the thing that helped me the most. And also when I started going to events at my battalion and I spoke to the PTIs there, they all said the best thing to do to improve your med ball throw is just press ups. Like, and I do swear by that because the closer I got to going for my assessment center, the more I did press ups. I ended up doing 50 press ups every single day for a month before I went to the assessment center. And it got to the point where I could do them in about sets of 15, sets of 20. And I was doing probably like three, four sets of those every single day. And then that is what enabled me to pass the med ball throw. Also for the med ball throw, I will say that I bought my own med ball. I couldn't find a 4K one for the life of me. So I ended up going to Sports Direct and I got a 3K med ball. So then I could just practice the form of doing doing the throw because I feel like a lot of the, you know, the score that you get is based on technique rather than strength. I mean, it is strength as well, but I think if you have poor form, it really does impact your score. So I bought one and I practiced with that. And also with the med ball enabled me to incorporate that into my other workouts and just do like a lot of like this movement, you know what I mean? With the ball and like generally lifting it above my head. And like, I used to do holds as well, med ball holds. I could end up holding it for 12 minutes, a 3K ball above my head before I went to the assessment center. And when I first started, I could do it for like two. So my strength did build quite a lot over doing these workouts. And as I said, strength workouts and hit workouts, I was only doing once a week. And then I developed to do press ups like all the time. Also, I would go to my local park when I'd be going on a walk or a run. And I had like a chin up bar, you know, those outside like gym parks, them basically. And I would just see how many I could do. I couldn't even do one when I first started. And after about two months, I could do about five. So it is just the slow progress, but consistency of doing it. So then as my arm strength did progress, I would say for the timeline of it, April to July, I was doing body weight exercises on Nike Training Club app. Then for after July, really I started doing a lot of more press ups and kept that through until the end. But also in July is when I started to do body weight exercises, but I did them with actual weights as well. So that's when I got a weighted vest that went up to 10 kg. And I also used my dumbbells because I went home um, from university and you know, back at my mom's house, she had dumbbells. So I started to use those and I went up to uh, four kg using those. There's no point in me sitting here and explaining them all. The best thing if you wanna improve your upper body strength and kind of follow in what I did um, if you want to do that, is go on the Nike Training Club app. I'll put basically all the workouts I did for upper body here on the screen so you can see what I did. And I alternated them every week and the workouts aren't very long. They're like 15 to 20 minutes. And I personally just like them because I can listen to my music, put a playlist on as I'm doing it and pump it through. And it's hit obviously. So it's doing your cardio as well as training whatever muscle group you wanna train. So that's pretty much what I used for upper body strength. And um, as I said, by the time I did the assessment center with my 3K med ball, I could throw it 4.5 meters. And on the day I got three two meters with a 4k med ball and I did feel like the practice of me throwing it there very much helped and the press-ups helped so, and then for pretty much everything else body wise strength abs I just did the night training club app pretty much consistently I would do like a 10 minute ab workout 20 minute ab workout once a week that was pretty much it if I felt felt like it I'd sprinkle in some sit-ups throughout the week but it would pretty much be like sets of 20 couple of sets when I felt bored or whatever like that I have this thing which is a good tip if you want to do sets of stuff whether it's press up squats sit-ups every single day it can seem quite daunting so how I would do it is if I'm waiting for something to cook in the oven or if I'm waiting for the kettle to boil or I'm at my desk working and I want to get up to make a drink or go to the bathroom Whenever I'm moving or doing stuff like that, I would go, okay, we'll just do 10 of this or 10 of that. And when you do that throughout the day, you basically end up doing like 50, 100, you know, reps of whatever movement you want to do and you get it in without it feeling daunting or without it feeling like, oh, I've got to do a big workout every single day. But yeah, pretty much that's what I was doing. And for general body, like lower body stuff, I did, again, the night training club workout stuff. And I also did the lower body workout moves on the army app, which basically consisted of uh, split squat, squats and lunges and also like squat jumps and stuff. So they were really helpful. And also what I liked about the army app, strength workouts because you also have upper body ones on there as well 
someone counts you down as you do your reps so you hold them and you really do build up a lot of strength that way it's not like just doing push-ups it's like you go down and then you go up and it's like you really feel the burn as you're doing it it was the same jazz i did one lower body workout a week i said one ab workout one arm workout and with the lower body stuff i would do like a 20 minute 30 minute hit when I was doing those workouts, I started off just doing whatever workouts I did. I'll put them here, the workouts that I did from the Nike Training Club app. And I started off doing them without weights. And I remember they, in the beginning, they used to like kill me. Doing a 20 minute hit workout of like squats, lunges, squat jumps, all of it would rinse me. And then slowly but surely you do improve your fitness, especially in conjunction with all the other running and everything else that I was doing. Like you do improve fitness. And in the end, I would then be doing it with my 10K weighted vest. I personally just chose to use a weighted vest because I wanted to be able to really ensure that my lower body had a lot of strength in it because I'm only like just under 60K. And I knew that if I had to do the mid thigh pull, you know, if I, even if I can, push and pull my own body weight, it's not high enough to meet the requirements of 76K or whatever I needed to do. So I do think that in a way, men have it a bit easier in that because you weigh heavier so you can, you kind of, it's easier to lift heavier. For you know, women, that's the one of the things I wanted to do to ensure that my lower body had a lot of strength of moving around because I knew that if I had 10K weighted vests on, that's an extra stone and a half. If, if I knew star jumps, tuck jumps, squat jumps, all the jumps in the world in a 10K weighted vest and still do press ups, still do planks and do it all in a 10K weighted vest, that like, I'm gonna have a good level of fitness without it on the day. And that did really help me. And my weighted vest was really cheap as well. I got it from Argos, it was like 20 pounds. Also my weights that I use, I know I get a lot of questions about the weights. They literally were like 30 pounds from Argos and they only go up to 7.5 kg in each dumbbell. And they're not expensive things if you do want to invest in your fitness like journey. So I would definitely recommend like buying some weights because it will come to a point when you're doing body weight workouts where you will find just doing like 50, 100, reps of something not that strenuous and then you can build in weights and it's like a whole new challenge all over again pretty much as i said to recap i did the night training club workouts for the lower body and training for the mid thigh pull i didn't go to the gym i never did any deadlifts i never did anything like proper lifting anything heavier than my 10k weight vest that i had that was pretty much all i was using um and i just did all these squats workouts all things like that and i mean i did get pretty strong like on the day i did my mid thigh pull of 87 kg and i didn't even think i'd be able to do the 46 kg that i needed for the medic when I first started. One thing I also did, but you do need like a family member or a friend to help you with this and corona permitting obviously. Um, but when I wanted to test my boundaries, you know, without going to gym, gym, without doing a deadlift, without doing any of that, because obviously that's not necessarily accessible right now within COVID, I would like lift one of my family members and I would know what kind of their weight is and just see if I could like, basically just put my arms around their legs and just lift them up. And when I was doing that, I ended up doing 80K. So I knew that within my legs, I can push up and do 80K so that I should be able to lift the whatever it was. And that's pretty much how I train for the lower body. And it is also just about giving it your 100% best effort on the day. Grit and bear it. Like when I was doing the mid thigh pull, I literally was like grimacing so hard and pulling so hard that because you do it onto like a pole, my fingers were slipping off the pole because you're pulling up that much. Like I didn't have the grip strength. So yeah, that's pretty much my advice for training and building up some strength. So basically I just want to end this video with some general tips and information about my diet and things like that that I was doing just to give you an overview of how I improved and the context in which I improved and then just a general overview of what I would recommend you to do if you want to get fit generally or want to get fit for the army. So diet, I ate shit, not gonna lie to you. I had a, probably a month or two in the summer where I was trying to eat healthily, but it still wasn't that good. I have a sweet tooth, I will eat junk food. That's never gonna change. I'm the type of person that would rather work out than have a diet. So obviously if you do have a clean diet, you're gonna get way faster results than someone like me who literally eats Ben and Jerry's like three times a week. Anyway, so that was my diet. Uh, in terms of sleep and stuff like that, I mean, my sleep schedule is all over the place, but I would also recommend getting at least eight hours of sleep a night, go to bed before 11 p.m., get up at like seven, you'll feel grand. And then on the hydration front, one thing that I am always good for is I drink at least two to three liters of water, just straight water every single day. I feel like that helps me do to work out and aids my recovery as well. And also on the recovery front, I also, when I felt like my muscles were tight or I'd overdone it or lifted something that then had like, you know, made my muscles sore, whatever it was, did a long run, then I would build in some recovery sessions, whether it was yoga, 20 minutes here and there, and they're also on the night training app there's some really good sessions there or whether it's just some simple stretching things like that going for a walk i did alongside my training because they really helped oh and also going for walks one thing i did do is i would do some tabs so i would basically do some long walks tabs are like a fast 
walk, slow jog type. It's hard to describe, but that's pretty much what it is. I ended up going from 5K up to 30K, built it up over a couple of months. Oh, the sun's coming out. God, that's blinding. So yeah, tabs really did help me basically build endurance and also just keep the stamina up and keep my lower legs strong because when you're walking constantly for 30 kilometers, which would take me about five hours, and I had obviously all my gear with me on the day, it was like a bladder full of water in my lunch, which would only be about eight, 10K, but it's equivalent to like me having my burst. You feel it in the legs, you do feel it in the legs and it's a good way to lose weight and tone up as well if that's something that you wanna do before going into the army. And also I would recommend doing walking because basically you're gonna be doing a lot of long distance walking when you join the army so it's worth prepping and doing that in advance. And yeah, that's pretty much, this is, this is a horrible way to end the video because I feel like the sun's blinding me. Um, but yeah, basically the summary is I did three runs a week, a long run, a mid run, a sprints run. Choose the distances that match your current fitness levels and adapt them as you improve. Doesn't matter where you start, it's always about where you end and about being consistent and true to yourself as you keep going through. And then with uh, strength workouts, I was also doing three a week. I did abs, arms, and legs. I used predominantly the Nike Training Club app for them, but sometimes I'd make up my own or sometimes I'd go on the Bass Already 360. They have Instagram page, uh, which is run by Ollie Alton, who's an ex SAS guy, and Jason Fox, also an ex SAS guy. And they would do workouts every single Wednesday that would focus on an area of the body. And I would basically use those you know, when I got bored of the like training club stuff or I wanted something a little bit harder because Jesus Christ, they are hard workouts. <laughs> and that's pretty much all I did. You know, it is just about being consistent and training three, four times a week, having good goals, knowing where you wanna be for the assessment center, knowing what targets you need to hit for the assessment center and building your plan around that. You know, it took me eight months from when I first started to when I took the assessment center and passed. But for you, that journey could be a lot shorter. It could be a lot longer. It also depends on where you're at in your journey and you know, what level you need to meet when you're going for the assessment center. But that's pretty much how I trained. If you want any more information on it, then please let me know. I'm happy to make more videos on this topic. And hopefully this is helpful. Let me know how you get on with your training if you're training for the assessment center. Or if you are past the assessment center, you're on basic training, then let me know any good training tips for training towards phase one and put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps. I will see you guys in the next one. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.